In the vast universe, there are plenty of mysteries. And one that has puzzled astronomers for a long time is the concept of dark matter. Dark matter constitutes 27% of the universe. But despite possessing powerful telescopes like the James Webb Space Telescope, scientists have been unable to detect the presence of dark matter. But recently, something unexpected has happened. This theory completely rejects the idea of the existence of dark matter and challenges our understanding of this mysterious substance present throughout the universe. What's interesting is that this theory is endorsed by none other than the legendary physicist Sir Roger Penrose, who believes that dark matter doesn't exist. So why is this theory forcing scientists to reevaluate the standard model of cosmology? Why does Sir Roger Penrose believe that dark matter doesn't exist? Let's find out. There is this dark matter, which seems to be out there, which dominates the material of the universe. It's by far the majority of the material substance in the universe. It's called dark matter. Nobody really knows what it is. Um, it seems to, it's the major part of the mass of a galaxy, and it's first observed because of the stars going around. They go around too fast in order to compensate for the extra attraction of this dark matter, and that's how it was first observed. And all sorts of observations, cosmological, tell you it's there. Now, if it's there, and if it's really gravity, because it's picked up on the gravitational degrees of freedom, there's nothing else in physics going on with regard to it. It tells you something about what it ought to be. Now, one thing it ought to be, and I think I've listed these things here, if you can read them. One thing it ought to be, what's its mass? Well, the only thing it can be if you've just got gravity, roughly speaking, is a thing called the Planck mass. Well, it might be 8 pi times it or something or other. But it's something of the order of the Planck mass. How big is the Planck mass? It's about 10 to the minus 5 grams. That's about the mass of the eye of a flea, I believe I got from Google or something. Now, that is uh, huge if you're talking about particle physics. Imagine looking at the night sky, filled with galaxies, stars, and cosmic wonders, it's a breathtaking view. But did you know that what you see is only a small part of the cosmic story? Dark matter, as the name suggests, doesn't shine or emit light. It doesn't interact with the forces that allow us to see celestial objects. It's nearly invisible, yet it's believed to make up about 27% of the universe's mass. This visible enigma has puzzled scientists for years and we infer its existence from the gravitational effects it has on the visible universe. Think of the universe as a giant jigsaw puzzle, and dark matter is the missing piece that completes the picture. It's like you can't see the piece, but you can see the gap it fills. The mystery deepens when you realize that despite our belief in dark matter, we're not entirely sure what it's made of or how it behaves. In particle physics, there's no elementary particle that represents dark matter. This means we've been searching for something that has remained elusive, a cosmic mystery. Scientists have suggested various candidates for dark matter, from weakly interacting massive particles to axions and sterile neutrinos. These are like missing characters in a cosmic story, and we've been on a quest to find them. Big experiments, like the Large Hadron Collider, and projects like CREST, Lux Zeppelin, and the Axion Dark Matter Experiment have been trying to unravel the mysteries of dark matter by capturing its elusive particles. Yet, despite years of searching, these efforts have mostly been met with silence. The lack of direct evidence for dark matter has led scientists to a profound question. What if dark matter isn't the answer? What if it's not the missing piece of the cosmic puzzle, but rather a gap in our understanding of the universe's fundamental forces. This is where the theory of Aquil comes in. Instead of persistently searching for dark matter particles, Aquil proposes a daring alternative. We might need to rethink how gravity works on cosmic scales. The conventional understanding of gravity, as formulated by Isaac Newton, has been reliable in explaining the movements of celestial bodies. However, Aquil suggests that there might be more to the story especially at cosmic distances and low accelerations, where the laws of gravity might need some adjustments. Aquil, 
which stands for a quadratic Lagrangian, is a theory that changes Newtonian gravity by introducing a new perspective on the gravitational force. The idea is to go beyond the traditional understanding of gravity and explore the possibilities of a more nuanced approach. In Aquil, gravity is described not by familiar laws, but by a different set of equations involving a general function and a threshold acceleration term. This theory suggests that when we look at the universe on cosmic scales, especially in regions with very low accelerations, we should observe a different behavior than what classical gravity predicts. It's like we're adjusting our perspective on the cosmos, searching for a new angle to understand its mysteries. So what fuels this quest for an alternative theory like Aquil? It's the unwavering curiosity of scientists and their determination to uncover the secrets of the cosmos. For almost a century, we've relied on the existence of dark matter to explain gravitational anomalies in galaxies and the structure of the universe. However, the lack of direct evidence has prompted us to reconsider our approach. Now that we've introduced the concept of dark matter and the intriguing alternative theory, Aquil, let's dive into the history of dark matter and understand its role in our understanding of the cosmos. The story of dark matter began back in 1933, when Swiss astronomer Fritz Zwicky made a discovery that would change the course of cosmology. Zwicky was an astute observer of the universe, and his focus was on galaxy clusters. These massive gatherings of galaxies, held together by gravity, are like cosmic cities, each with its own unique characteristics. While studying the Coma Cluster, Zwicky stumbled upon a puzzling discrepancy. He realized that the observed mass of matter in the cluster determined by studying the motion of the galaxies within it, didn't match the mass calculated based on the brightness and the number of galaxies in the cluster. In simpler terms, something was missing. It's akin to having a jigsaw puzzle, where the pieces you can see don't add up to the complete picture. Zwicky, however, didn't brush off this anomaly. He proposed that there must be some unforeseen form of matter in the cluster, something that doesn't emit light or interact with electromagnetic forces. He named this mysterious missing element dark matter. This marked the first step in the dark matter puzzle, raising fundamental questions about the composition of the universe. The enigma of dark matter deepened with the entry of the American astronomer Vera Rubin. She, along with her colleague Kent Ford, turned their attention to a different aspect of the cosmos, the rotation of galaxies. In celestial mechanics, it's a common rule that objects farther from the center should move more slowly. It's similar to the way planets in our solar system orbit the sun. Those farther away move at a slower pace. This is a fundamental principle of gravity. However, Rubin and Ford noticed something unusual when they looked at the motion of stars and galaxies. Instead of following the expected pattern, the stars in these galaxies were moving at increasing speeds as you moved away from the center. Think of it like a carousel, where the outer seats spin just as fast as the inner ones. This defied conventional logic. It was as if there was some unforeseen force at work, an influence that affected the outer regions of galaxies differently. Rubin and Ford arrived at a conclusion similar to Zwicky's. To explain this unexpected behavior, they suggested the presence of unseen matter, which they too referred to as dark matter. It was becoming increasingly clear that dark matter was not an isolated anomaly in the coma cluster, but a pervasive mystery influencing the dynamics of galaxies across the cosmos. As time went on, more pieces of evidence began to fall into place, strengthening the case for dark matter. In the 1980s, astronomers observed a phenomenon known as gravitational lensing, this happens when the gravitational pull of massive objects, like galaxy clusters, bends the light from background objects, such as distant galaxies. The way this bending occurred supported the idea that dark matter was present in these clusters, acting as an invisible gravitational lens. Another piece of the puzzle came from the study of the cosmic microwave background, the afterglow of the Big Bang. Measurements of the CMB revealed a universe that was clumpier and more filamentous than what would be expected if it were solely composed of visible matter. The existence of dark matter was becoming more than just a theory. It was an essential part of the cosmic narrative. This cosmic narrative is ingrained in what is known as the Standard Model of Cosmology, 
where dark matter has a significant role to play. The standard model of cosmology is our best attempt to explain the universe's origin, evolution, and current state. It includes the concept of dark matter as a fundamental component of the cosmos, accounting for a substantial part of its mass and influencing how galaxies are spread out. However, there's a hitch. Despite all the evidence, we're still in the dark about what dark matter is composed of. In the realm of particle physics, where we dig into the fundamental building blocks of the universe, there isn't a particle that represents dark matter. It's like having a character in a story who's present throughout, affecting the events, but remains faceless and nameless. This enigmatic character is what scientists have been tirelessly searching for. They've proposed various candidates, each with its own characteristics and behaviors. Leading contenders include weakly interacting massive particles, or WIMPs, massive compact halo objects, axions, and sterile neutrinos. To hunt for these elusive particles, scientists have undertaken ambitious experiments, often deep underground to shield against interference. The Large Hadron Collider, a massive particle accelerator, has been at the forefront of this quest, trying to create dark matter particles under controlled conditions. Alongside the LHC, experiments like CREST, Lux Zeppelin, the Axion Dark Matter Experiment, and Dark Matter Maps from the Dark Energy Survey have all been part of the mission to unveil dark matter. Despite these efforts, a shroud of uncertainty still hovers over the existence of dark matter particles. It's as if the enigmatic character in our cosmic tale remains concealed behind layers of cosmic mystery, refusing to step into the spotlight. Given the prolonged silence from the dark matter front, it's no wonder that scientists have started to question the narrative. What if, after all these years, dark matter isn't the solution to the cosmic puzzle? What if it's not the invisible force holding galaxies together, but rather a gap in our understanding of the fundamental forces that govern the cosmos? The quest for alternatives to dark matter have led to the exploration of modified gravity theories. One such theory, Modified Newtonian Dynamics, also called MOND, takes a different approach. It suggests that instead of searching for invisible particles, we should rethink how gravity works on cosmic scales. MOND proposes changes to the classical gravitational force law, particularly in environments with very low accelerations. The idea behind MOND is to adapt the laws of gravity to better match the observed motion of galaxies without the need for dark matter. Mond made a significant step towards this by introducing a threshold acceleration, below which gravity behaves differently than what Newton's laws predict. Aquil, or A quadratic Lagrangian, is a further development of Mond. This theory goes beyond just tweaking the laws of gravity. It introduces a whole new perspective on how gravity operates. In Aquil, the gravitational force is described by a different set of equations involving a general function and a threshold acceleration term. Aquil suggests that when we look at the universe on cosmic scales, particularly in regions with very low accelerations, the laws of gravity should behave differently than what they do in our familiar, high-acceleration solar system. It's like adjusting the rules of a game for different playing fields. This theory is not a rejection of our understanding of gravity, but a refinement, offering a fresh angle to approach this cosmic puzzle. It implies that the universe might not be as straightforward as we once thought, and the rules that govern its behavior might have more nuances than we initially perceived. The exploration of Aquil and similar theories isn't a dismissal of the well-established dark matter model, but rather a challenge to it. It's a question that scientists are bold enough to ask. What if our understanding of the universe is incomplete, and the missing piece isn't in the cosmos, but in our comprehension of its fundamental forces. The exploration of modified gravity theories isn't a rejection of the fundamental principles of gravitational physics laid down by Isaac Newton. Instead, it's an effort to enhance and expand our understanding of gravity under specific cosmic conditions. These theories become relevant when we delve into the realm of cosmic scales and ultra-low accelerations, where traditional gravitational laws may need adjustments to explain observations. The Mond theory, 
introduced in 1983 by Israeli physicist Mordechai Milgram, suggests that instead of searching for invisible particles like dark matter, we should consider altering our understanding of how gravity functions in regions with extremely low accelerations. Mond recognizes that Newton's laws of gravity, which work well in high acceleration environments like our solar system, may not perfectly describe the dynamics of galaxies and galaxy clusters. A key concept in Mond is the introduction of a threshold acceleration. This threshold marks the point below which gravity begins to behave differently from what classical physics predicts. Mond implies that when accelerations are below this threshold, we need to adjust our gravitational laws to account for the observed behavior of celestial objects. It's like seeing the rules change when you transition from playing marbles to playing chess. Different games, different rules. Aquil, or A quadratic Lagrangian, is an extension and refinement of Mond, proposed in 1984 by Mordechai Milgram and Jacob Breckenstein. It builds upon the core concept of Mond, introducing a new mathematical framework to describe how gravity operates at very low accelerations. The central innovation in Aquil is the introduction of a modified Lagrangian, which is a function that represents the difference between the observed gravitational force and the force predicted by classical Newtonian gravity. The Lagrangian in Aquil involves a general function and the threshold acceleration term. In essence, Aquil suggests that the way gravity behaves in regions with extremely low accelerations differs from what we observe in high acceleration systems. It's like having a specialized set of rules for a unique cosmic arena. The key distinction between traditional gravity and modified gravity theories like Aquil lies in how they scale with cosmic distances and accelerations. In the familiar high acceleration environment, such as our solar system, Newton's laws of gravity remain an excellent description. These laws have been rigorously tested and verified over centuries. However, as we venture into the vast reaches of the universe, particularly when examining the dynamics of galaxies and galaxy clusters, we encounter significantly lower accelerations. It's as if we're navigating a new terrain where the old maps no longer suffice. This is where Mond and Aquil come into play. Let's consider the cosmic landscape from a Mond and Aquil perspective. When we observe the behavior of stars at the outer edges of galaxies or in the vast voids of cosmic structures, we encounter accelerations that are orders of magnitude lower than those experienced in the solar system. In these cosmic outskirts, the standard gravitational rules begin to lose their explanatory power. The key insight of Mond is that below a certain critical acceleration, gravity no longer scales linearly with distance. Instead, it starts to scale in a way that's closer to the square root of the distance. This adjustment accounts for the unusual galactic rotation curves observed by astronomers like Vera Rubin. Aquil takes this idea a step further. Instead of directly modifying the way gravity scales with distance, it introduces the concept of a Lagrangian, which defines the difference between the observed gravitational force and the one predicted by traditional gravity laws. The Lagrangian's function depends on the distance and the threshold acceleration. So what are the implications of these modifications to the laws of gravity at cosmic scales? The core of Mond and Aquil is that they aim to provide a better explanation for the observed behavior of galaxies without the need for dark matter. By redefining the way gravity operates in low acceleration environments, these theories offer an alternative explanation for phenomena like galaxy rotation curves. The primary advantage of Aquil over Mond lies in its more sophisticated mathematical framework, which makes it a refined and more comprehensive theory. Aquil, with its Lagrangian description, provides a more detailed and nuanced explanation of how gravity works in cosmic settings with ultra-low accelerations. This added mathematical complexity positions Aquil as a comprehensive alternative to dark matter, addressing some of Mond's limitations. To grasp the significance of Aquil, let's compare it to the traditional dark matter model. In the standard dark matter framework, the presence of dark matter is invoked to account for the peculiarities observed in the motion of galaxies, particularly the fact that outer regions rotate at nearly the same speed as inner regions. 
The dark matter model attributes this behavior to the gravitational influence of unseen particles, effectively filling the cosmic role of dark matter. However, Aquil takes a different approach. It suggests that the transition between the inner and outer regions of a galaxy results from a change in the velocity distribution of stars rather than the presence of invisible matter. In other words, Aquil proposes that the observed kinks in galactic rotation curves arise from the inherent dynamics of the galaxies themselves rather than the gravitational pull of dark matter. A crucial turning point in the examination of Aquil and its compatibility with observations occurred with a study by K. H. Che. Che's research aimed to determine how well Aquil could explain the inner and outer portions of galaxy rotation curves using a data set of 152 galaxies observed in the Spitzer Photometry and Accurate Rotation Curves database. Che's approach involved comparing the observed centripetal acceleration of particles in motion with the expected Newtonian acceleration derived from the distribution of baryonic matter in the galaxies primarily consisting of stars and dust. Che's study yielded enlightening results. It was observed that Aquil provided a better fit to the spark data than the conventional dark matter model. This suggested that Aquil could potentially offer a more accurate explanation for the observed behavior of galaxies, especially the differences between inner and outer rotation curves. However, a critical factor emerged. Cosmic mean external fields. Che's study underscored that Aquil produced accurate predictions for both inner and outer rotation curves only when the cosmic mean external field was considered. This external field represents the influence of distant cosmic structures, like massive galaxy clusters, on the observed galactic dynamics. The inclusion of the cosmic mean external field in Aquil further highlights the theory's capacity to account for cosmic intricacies emphasizing the intricate interplay between local galactic dynamics and the broader cosmic environment. While Aquil's performance in explaining galaxy rotation curves is promising, it's crucial to acknowledge that no scientific theory is without its limitations. Aquil, like all theories, has its own set of challenges and shortcomings. One notable limitation is Aquil's inability to fully explain observed gravitational lensing by galaxies, where massive gravitational pull bends the path of light from background objects. The way this bending occurs has been significant evidence for the presence of dark matter. While Aquil excels in explaining rotation curves, it may not entirely address the phenomenon of gravitational lensing. The exploration of Aquil and its potential as an alternative to dark matter represents a significant stride in the ongoing quest to unravel cosmic mysteries. It encourages us to rethink our understanding of gravity and its behavior in the vast reaches of the universe. While Aquil may not have all the answers, it stands up as a bold leap in the realm of modified gravity theories, offering a fresh perspective on how the cosmos operates. So thank you for watching this video. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section and stay tuned for more content.